Hey guys, welcome to Flat Top King. Hey, today is all about the Father's Day special. A big, thick, juicy, tomahawk style ribeye. We're gonna reverse sear this on our Weber charcoal grill, and then we're gonna sear it off on the Weber griddle. But since it's Father's Day and it's special, I'm making my own dinner. <laughs> and we're doing scallop potatoes. You guys stay tuned. All right, so when you celebrate a monumental uh, day like this, I like to take basically about three weeks off for Father's Day just to prepare. <laughs> uh, but this is the deal. So the wife and I, uh, luckily, when I celebrate Father's Day, she knows that she gets to enjoy a good steak because that's what I like. When it's Mother's Day... I also I, get to enjoy a good steak. <laughs> I like scrambled eggs. <laughs> All right, so this is the deal. We have done a couple of videos how we reverse seared uh, meats, and we just launched a video, uh, Thick versus Thin Burgers. And for a lot of you who don't know, we started off doing charcoal grill cooking and all that stuff, and it's actually my number one passion. So today is kind of like an homage. I'm doing what I want to do, the best meal possible, and I know I've got a lot of support out there from the Weber Kettle community. Big, thick, juicy ribeye you guys can see here. We're going to season that up and get that uh, set to the side. For our potatoes, I've got some bacon, some some green onions, some jalapenos, some horseradish cheddar, American cheese. I bought this just in case for the top. Make a little roux, get that all set up, do a mandolin, get the potatoes real thin, and then do like a scallop bake style. Happy Father's Day to each and every one of you. Let's go. So we got the Weber kettle settling around about 225-ish. It's not a big deal, 225, 250. Just kind of like a offset style. I got some hickory chunks on there starting to heat up and that's how we're going to reverse sear the ribeye, okay? A little bit of Worcestershire sauce as a bonder. Make sure you get all the edges, even the sides. I like to actually make my steak just a little bit larger. So instead of stretching it out and patting it out thin, I like to bunch it back up, make it about as big as possible, fat as possible. What happens is once you put it on the smoker, or your kettle, you're allowed to keep it on there longer because it's a thicker piece of meat, which obviously the longer you keep it on there, the more smoke flavor you have, okay? Use your favorite seasonings. I like about a three quarter mix of this. Remember, it's a big piece of meat, it can handle it. This is salt, pepper, garlic, and butter. And then come back, just a light coating of this. Okay. All right, now that that's seasoned, our grill's ready. We're just gonna set it right on there. Off to the side and let it do its thing. Start cooking some bacon. While the bacon's frying up, let's chop up some jalapenos, the green onions, and we're gonna slice our potatoes. All right, I cleared the path off. I'm gonna take some of those uh, bacon trimmings and a little bit of oil. That's gonna be for our roux for the cheese sauce to go on our scallop potatoes. So just let that heat up. The rest of the oil can go help cook the bacon. I have a mandolin here. You can obviously cut this by hand. If you do use a mandolin, we just urge caution. Whether you have a safeguard or not, that's completely up to you. Once your potato has been sliced thin, we're just gonna take away some hot water, kind of rinse that starch off there. And then once these are rinsed off, we're gonna dry them. While these are drying, we're gonna start on our cheese sauce. All right, as you can see, I've just got a thin layer of potatoes. Just move them back and forth, got a clean tea towel. And all we're trying to do is just draw as much more out of these potatoes as possible. I don't want the horseradish cheddar to be overpowering. So I'm gonna kind of keep it just like that. Put those jalapenos in that bacon grease, start sauteing those. All right, 
we always talk about temperatures and how to adjust your temperature zones and how the griddle reacts. This is why I've been such a big fan of the Weber since I got it. The first two uh, burn, these two right here are on low and this one's been on high for quite a while. So just to shoot the gun, to give you guys an idea, 400, 430, which is expected, and 530. So just going to show you, it's very, very, very well thought of when it comes to heat distribution. This side, although it's in the 400s on low, you can anticipate that because there's so much heat that grabs uh, left to right or right to left. Um, but that's very good. All right, just add a little flour for your roux. I'm a little short on uh, bacon grease, what I saved versus the flour. So I just add a little knob of butter, help that out a little bit. You're just trying to cook the flour out just a hair. Show you what kind of consistency we're looking for. That looks good actually right there. So I'll just take the rest of that butter out. Save that. See that right there? That's what I'm looking for. Heavy cream, milk, half and half, whatever you got. When you're making a cheese sauce, a lot of times your cheese is gonna help as a binder. So you don't necessarily want your roux, your gravy, your uh, mix right now um, to be too thick because once you add your cheese, it's gonna thicken up. And obviously once this cools down, it's gonna thicken up as well. So just keep that in mind. So we're looking at a little bit thinner consistency. We're gonna season after we get the consistency we want because if you have to keep adding and you season now and you don't season at the end, then your seasoning is gonna be off. That's how we're thickening it up. It doesn't take long. Fresh pepper and salt. We're gonna add some of that horseradish. All right, you wanna taste this as you go. Um, I end up putting uh, five slices of American cheese, that little horseradish. My idea is to keep this a little bit thinner, a little bit more neutral, although you do want that cheese and jalapeno to come through because I am gonna layer cheese with potatoes. We'll show you that real, real quick. But you just want enough cheese to break off that, uh, kind of like the, the, the uh, bechamel style flavor. Like if you've ever done it often, you'll know it's just kind of like that cream base. And that's what we're looking for. Salt, pepper to taste. Just take some butter, get you a good Pyrex or cast iron dish, whatever you got. Just make sure it's lathered really, really good. Helps protect those potatoes. And then I'm gonna layer one and layer the other one exactly the same. Just a little bit of that shredded cheese. And this is where you can make it as cheesy as you want. Work that all the way up to the edge. This one you kind of want full coverage because this is going to act as your uh, dome to protect your potatoes. We got a baking sheet lined with aluminum foil. We're going to set it in the oven at 375 and we're checking in about 30 45 minutes. Uh, once we get close to that end time, we're going to top it with the uh, green onions, more cheese, and then the bacon. All right, we've hovered around 225 degrees, somewhere through there. It's taking about 45 minutes to about an hour. Um, our internals temperature is looking at right about 110 to 100 degrees. Depends on where you probe it. I don't know which one I'm more excited about. The crown jewel obviously is the steak, but I can't get over how fantastic these scallop cheese potatoes came out. Obviously, you got to let them cool. You got to let them cool. That'll burn your mouth like crazy. The Weber cranked up on high. Looking for a good high heat, maybe about 525 to 550. Once we get there, we're gonna sear it back and forth about a minute per side, flipping it back and forth, back and forth till the desired doneness. I'm gonna shoot about 122 to 125. That's the temperature that we like. Little oil down. Just flipping it back and forth. 
get a nice cross. It's one of them cooks where you just crave and crave and crave and crave. Oh yeah, looky there. You get that nice cheese crust that's developed on the side. Make sure potatoes are cooked all the way through. Oh, that's hot. I'm gonna regret this. Well, I'm gonna regret it too then, honey, because I can't. You know, your pain is my pain. <laughs> mm. I haven't even said a word yet. I haven't even said a word yet. Mm -hmm. That little bit of horseradish cheddar. <laughs> I thought so. It's just, even when we do it with a burger sauce, it's just that little extra kick. Mm. Obviously, you're going to need to make the steak the way you like it. Mm. And there it is. Using the Weber family griddles, my first love was the charcoal. They came along with a griddle, and I absolutely love the griddle. It's fantastic. I use it all the time. It's becoming definitely one of my favorites, and I cannot wait to sit down and enjoy this dinner for a Father's Day special. We got to try inside. a bite. We got to try a bite. <laughs> what do you think? They're, you think I'm going to eat it and say it's not good? Look at it. I know. Well, we got to. There's try a, a spinalis. Go. I wanted to see the color. Mm, right there in those pan juices. This is the first time you've actually tried these two seasons on a steak. Mm. 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 That shake that's that butter, garlic, salt, and pepper that you mm. just love. I'm mm. going inside and I'm gonna enjoy this meal all the way to the bone. I will be gnawing on this bone. Mm. Not if I get to it first. <laughs> you would not want a bone. A bone knower. <laughs> All right, guys, if you're interested, we have a membership oh, button. Man. Oh, my God. What oh. are you doing? You Don't take that bite. Mm. That's my, it's oh, Father's that Day, is, not Mother's Day. That's dang good. <laughs> <laughs> Just eat the bone. <laughs> if you guys are interested, we have a join button down below with the membership program. We thank each and every one of you for taking time for doing so. Happy Father's Day to each and every one of you out there. Thank you so much for the journey. I hope you enjoy your day. Check us out on the Griddle Group on Facebook. So we're going to talk about griddles where we can introduce some smoke flavor for a charcoal grill or from a pellet grill and absolutely just up the flavor. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to press that subscribe button, pound the notification button, share it with your friends. Thanks. Mm. I'm going back for the potatoes. Mm. What are you, stop gnawing on my bone. <laughs>